Hi, I'm Rob and today I'm at the village of Bracefield at the Wheat Sheaf. And we've got an interesting televisual sort of walk today, so come along and join me. So Bracefield gets its name from the Britonic language uh, and it was called, <laughs> go again, Breakfelt. Uh, which means, pronounced rightly or wrongly, open land with brushwood. So the walk starts straight from the pub car park and we head down a little footpath in the corner. I've got very many happy memories from that place there, that's Bracefield Social Club over there. Um, inexplicably my parents were members. I don't know why we didn't live anywhere near Bracefield, but it was great fun on a Sunday night. So here we are, obviously the footpath, all the arrows have been taken down, it's a wee bit overgrown, I'm just hoping that it becomes self-explanatory, I think so, we'll see. Yes, here we go, through this field of what I hope is cows, and you keep tight in against the hedgerow. Let's watch where you're putting your feet, there's plenty of cow pie surprise. So that's actually a field of young bulls. So uh, we we'll give those a wide berth. They're not normally dangerous, but uh, don't take any chances because they're a bit inquisitive sometimes. Well, just as I breathe a sigh of relief <laughs> through this field, I know they're young, there's bloody loads of them. So anyway, I think I'm safe when I see this gate, but uh-uh. Rob's bull run par deux. So I've reached the safety of the stile. It's a bit quaggy, as you can see. And uh, this is going to be challenging. Hmm. Uh, I wouldn't bring your dogs on this walk either, to be honest with you. That might just get them a bit agitated. Right, now I've got to find a way of uh, getting through this. Well, if you were good at the old triple jump at school, then that was a cinch. <laughs> Managed to get through there. Fairly clean. <laughs> anyway, onward. Well, they're actually quite cute. Look at them. Twins. So I found an arrow. So you continue around the edge of the field up towards the woods and look at this lovely scenery so through the trees you can see some people wandering around and that is the Sir Harry Harry <laughs> not that familiar with him, the Sir Harold Hillier Arboretum. Uh, now he was a nurseryman here in Hampshire and he bought the land in 1953 and he planted it with many many exotic trees and native trees and uh, to the point now there are 42,000 trees and shrubs over there from all around the world. Uh, there's over 1300 types of rhododendron and in 1977 he uh, set up a charitable trust and passed it to Hampshire County Council. There's over 180 acres of woodland, trees, parkland, all centred around Jermyn's house, which is the, the house he originally bought to set up the Arboretum. Yeah, it's very nice. You've got to pay to go in, but uh, it is a, a lovely, lovely place if gardens are your thing. Anyway, we're coming up to the woods here, so we've got to go over that stile. As you see, the garden's surrounded by deer fencing. Uh, the gate here, and we've got to go round. And the footpath skirts the edge of the arboretum. You can see lovely autumn colours. And different types of trees as a, as a maple of some description. As 
you can see it's chestnut time it's uh, late October and the husks down there uh, have been raided probably by squirrels or the odd forager that's walked by lovely fresh roast chestnuts out of the woods one of my favourite things from our woods where I live There we go, we're coming up on a, another one of these gates to keep the deer out. Official diversion. So, I don't know if you can see through the woods, there's the glass houses around German's house, which is uh, the headquarters for Hilliers. And uh, they win lots of prizes actually at Chelsea every year for their gardens. Yeah, they're uh, number one nursery people in the country, I think. Just as you glimpse German's house there, there's a stile on your left. And this takes you away from the gardens and deeper into the woods. And these woods that we're going through now are Ampfield Woods. Ampfield is a, a little village between Hursley and Romsey. And um, Ampfield Woods is the real uh, genesis of my, my walking passion. Uh, I was let loose down by the church at Ampfield into these woods to do a two-day hike to... Uh, to Winchester and that was via up Sonborne where we were to stay the night in a farmyard in a tent and we just had an old paper ordnance survey map and a compass and there were what about three four of us four of us I think yeah Mark Cooper Gary Firth I think um, me I can't remember who else. Terrible how your memory gets, isn't it? <laughs> and off we went, and ever since that, I have enjoyed walking immensely and camping. It's just, uh, just wonderful. But then I'm preaching to the converted. You must think that already, or you wouldn't be watching the video. If anyone's interested, it was the 11th Eastley Scouts, which was uh, on the Bird Avery in Eastley. Uh, long since disbanded now. So at this junction we carry straight on. And the path's a little more made up now. Which is good for my feet. Goodness gracious me, people in the distance. And this corner straight forward. Wearing horseshoe on there, that means it'll be all rutted up from horses. That's turned into a lovely morning, the woods are, are gorgeous. Uh, heading on down and we're almost at our next reference point on the map, which is a place called Red Gate. Oh, here we are, this must be Red Gate, where we join the Monarch's Way, which comes across from there, uh, goes down to here. It's a gate, it's not red. Let's have a check. Monarch's Way. Monarch's Way. And this takes us off towards, eventually, Lower Slackstead. Morning. Morning. Electric fence to keep the horses in. And there they are over there. And we emerge back out into the open countryside. Well, that way lies Woolly Green Farm, up the track, which is private. We turn right at the finger post, Let's go down towards Hodgecops.
Well, looky, looky. <laughs> Shall I? No, don't think I will on this occasion. <laughs> that rubber looks like it's perished a bit. A few houses over there. There's Bowles Ground Manor over there somewhere. Another house in the corner. And the houses appearing of Lower Slackstead. Lovely cottage over there, got plenty of wood in for the coming winter. Put in the old wood burning stove. So we come out on the road at the finger post and the lovely thatch cottage. This one not for sale. There's uh, up Slackstead there. We're in Lower Slackstead. We turn left and we go down towards Pucknell. Very nice, every home should have one. Just a few cottages. Now some of this scenery will soon start to get familiar to certain people of a certain age. Because between 1979 and 1981, the old Southern Television that were taken over by TVS and then taken over by Meridian, which was then sort of swallowed up by sort of ITV in general, although it still is Meridian, but it's not local as such really now. Anyway, Southern Television made the wonderful, absolute, definite appointment for Sunday evenings. Whereas all gummage around here. So I'll be showing you some of the scenery, both on the walk and I'm going to do a little bit after the walk. But we're going to head up the lane to the original Scatterbrook Farm. Seems like Scatterbrook could do with Wurzel back again. Now there's Hawks Farmhouse. You see where the windows have been bricked up to avoid the, the Georgian window tax. So you may have seen that in Wurzel. But uh, the main farmhouse, Scatterbrook Farm, was Pucknell Farmhouse, which is around the corner here. So there we are, that's Scatterbrook Farm, the farmhouse of Scatterbrook Farm, where the children lived, and the farmer, whereas we used to visit frequently. Found a bit of work done on it now, it's really Pucknell Farmhouse, and a nice bit of a barn there. But the barn that Wurzel was hiding in is this one just up here into the farmyard. Lovely little village, all 16th century. So there we are, there's the farmhouse, Scatterbrook farmhouse. And the barns where the children and Wurzel would have played around out in the farmyard. And it's now a little uh, Little business centre. Civil engineers and plasma design people and all sorts. Anyway, we say goodbye to Scatterbrook or Pucknell Farm as it is. And then carry on up the lane through the village of Pucknell. Uh, what I do at the end of the video, I'll do my usual sign off at the, uh, at the wheat sheaf and then we'll take a drive because when they filmed Wurzel Gummidge, it, it, it looks like it's all in one little village, but it's it's not. It's uh, it's spread out across several villages here in the the Tess Valley, um, King Somborn, and uh, Ten Acre Field is sort of up the road on the way to King Somborn in the middle of nowhere. So I'll sign off the video, and uh, I'll see if I can go and find Ten Acre Field, and then take a few shots round um, King Somborn for you. So if anyone's watching the video that uh, 
that used to work for Southern Television. I know quite a few people did, making sets and cameramen and directors. I think the director of Wurzel Gummish lives in uh, Twyford. But anyway, if any one of those is, is watching, I'd love to see some comments on my Facebook group uh, about the wonderful John Pertwee, who played Wurzel, or uh, Eunice Stubbs, who played Aunt Sally. Yeah, it's very, uh, very fond part of my teenage years, Wurzel Gummidge. <laughs> sort of a, a forbidden sin <laughs> to watch that at the age I was. But there you go, I think everyone enjoyed it, from toddlers up to your old nanny. <laughs> So a shortcut would be to carry on up the lane, which takes you to the club and back to the pub. But our walk continues to the right on this fork. Well, the leaves are coming down in goodly numbers now. Well, I'm going to take a little deviation from the map I've printed. That's where we were headed, to the junction, turn left, follow the road back through the village to the pub. But there's a very pretty part of the village with the church in it, to the right. So I'm going to do a little block that goes up this lane, around to see the church, around to the left, and then back down to that junction you just saw. See this lovely village pond. Wow, now when people talk about a cottage garden, that is a lovely, lovely cottage garden. Look at the colour, this is October, look at the colour. How gorgeous. Yew Tree Cottage. Absolutely beautiful. Lovely sculpted hedge as well, lovely sculpted lay land eye. Well, full marks to the owner, or maybe the gardener, I don't know which, but whichever, full marks to them. So we turn the bend up towards All Saints Church, which is a Victorian brick church built in 1855 and there are war graves here let's go and have a look well try as I might this is the only war grave I can find and it's so faded I can't make out who it is or where it was but um, Anyone that knows military crests, then uh, there's one there. So we'll bid farewell to the church and carry on on our walk. We'll exit via this gate onto the lane and we'll do a left. Well, Bracefield is the place in Hampshire where they found the first evidence of Neolithic settlements. So, back on route, we'll, uh, we'll take a left turn. And we follow the road all the way back to the pub. And there's the Congregational Chapel, 1918. Nice village hall and recreation ground there. 
So that's the village school. And they're all out on their lunch break. Clearly an infant school. <laughs> so I'm going to take a diversion down before I go back to the pub. Have a closer look at the social club. Ah, oh, so there it is as I remember it. It hasn't changed an iota since the day I walked out the door for the last time, which was probably in about 1975. And I just realised now actually why we went in there, because both my sisters lived down the road at Romsey. They were both on the, the Great Woodley estate. So that's probably why I killed two birds of one stone and go down the social club. So we go back down past the school. So there we are, we're back at the wheat sheaf. We've done about four and a half to five miles. Toyed with a little walk a little bit by going up to see the church. Seen some of the locations that Wurzel Gummidge was filmed at. I'll take you to see some more after I sign off here. If you liked, then please. Well, very disappointing. I was looking for the 10 acre field. It was marked on the map. But when I got there, <laughs> the path went straight through a hedge that <laughs> you couldn't get through. It was impenetrable. And it didn't look like it anyway. But anyway, the town scenes in Wurzel Gummidge, most of them were filmed here in King Somborne. And he's certainly been seen coming out of the church gates here. And also resting on a bench, which was just here. And whether there was a bench there originally, or put there for filming, I don't know, but it's not there now. Anyway, sorry about not being able to see 10 acres, but this is King Somborn. Which is a pretty enough place in itself just to have come and have a look. Anyway, join me on the next walk. <laughs>